And yes, folks, basically it'll be a non-profit and you'll pay a little bit of money and you'll be able to keep an eye on the meatballs in space because NASA's not going to tell you about them. Now, let's see, the most problem in communication in mankind's history has always been, in the shadows we talk very good, okay? In the shadows, communication from the most powerful people in the world, they stay on the same page, okay? Uh, let's see if NASA will end up saying that there actually is a moon because this is basically, I can talk to any mainframe in the world, okay, just about anybody can, uh, that's our moon in comparison to the side of Venus. Now, Mercury is the same damn size, okay? Now, no matter what, when we we're at this footage here, that is not Venus, okay? It's another magnetical, and even in the uh, magnetical line, we know that this is Venus here, and it's puts off, we've already showed you in the videos that it showed its shadow. So another and we've also, and we're going to go to it because we'll look at it some more, because we're going to pop out so you can see where we're at on shooting here. Now, odds are, now, I believe that you know, there's no problem that the idea that the sun's electrical, but see, this is all light. We always get the light is the red, and the white, and the black is the darkness, okay, in this shot. Now, they can change the color of the red to the light and everything like that. But scientifically, as you see on the magnetic line, that there is a luminosity here. And we're going to pop up 999 on that. And yes, we've basically, no, is it a moon of Venus? That's up to NASA. Maybe it's not a moon. It's not considered a moon. No matter what, this is a planet toyed object that has a luminosity here. And it's, it's shadow there. Okay, whether it's here or whether it's out here somewhere between us and the sun, but there is a magnetic line, and we know about the magnetic lines, i.e., there's more planets in our solar system than what NASA, because basically they consider a planet so, such size, and then Pluto, well, Pluto's not that big. Well, Pluto is still a chess game because the idea that they still really, now maybe NASA does, so they've said, well, it's not a planet, well, okay, then it's down to like, but why do we call Mercury? A planet because really Mercury should not be considered a planet because it's just a bunch of whatever that NASA wants to say that the mineral compounds are of that planetoid object which now they say has water on it which it's sweating which is quite possible but there is a luminosity to uh, Mercury just like the moon and moon and Mercury are the same doggone size okay so we pump we pump up in size here to go to uh, we'll go 777, and we'll go over and look at our Venus to be, we know what Venus is, the luminosity of it in its magnetic line, because we've seen it when it's blown up, that it'll end up black on the outside, and it'll still be white here, and yes, it looks way bigger because it's zo that it's the closest thing to the SOHO satellite, okay, which is A, we're at ACE, we're at A, okay, now no matter what, through the magnetical, with the darkness being here, that there is these objects right here. So, now, I am not really saying that they're a moon. I wouldn't think that they're a moon, but then again, they have magnetical. So, it'd be interesting to start seeing a look of, and we really don't, we'd have to find search Sechi and Soho and all the, so far, and it's only like since 2000, you know, something. I don't want to nail the exact, go to Soho, they'll say when they launch the satellites and everything like that. So, no matter what, this magnetical line is here, no matter what, this is here. And also, we get somewhat of a shadow up here of something. So there's a magnetic line going through here. So this is basically in the solar system and close to the sun. So there, no matter what, we have another object that could be considered something like the size of Mercury or smaller. And it's in right there in the quadrants of Venus. Okay, because that's a magnetic line. Okay, and then there's so no matter what, if it's this here, and this is between this, the Soho telescope satellite lens and there's a magnetical so more than likely you're just looking at what Venus looks like from a far distance or Mercury ie because we'll zoom out so no matter what zoomed in like this and then I can zoom in a little we'll go into like 999 real fast so you we get the biggest look that we could possibly see of this so all these videos today are stunning yes and it's all because of your taxpayer dollars and Soho with your satellites and stuff like that you see so uh, 
right to disclosure, you know, you can always do that legally with the United States of America and get what you're going to get that's not going to be national security because when they get down to national security then, and they don't want to get too, because that can get argued out in court. Okay, come on, what is it in, what's about space that's national security that the idea we don't want to see? Because we can't play no card game saying, okay, that we've got some kind of secret military, something hanging out up by the sun. It doesn't put off a magnetical. This is actually an object in space, not no damn UFO or nothing. This is Venus, and there's a magnetical line, so there is some kind of object. And basically, since you get separation with this darkness here, there's something up by the by Venus. Could be a ma there's a massive amount of distance between here and there. Just think about the distance between us and the moon. It's not short, okay? So whether they want to consider this a moon or not. Now remember, the moon has uh, a luminosity, and this has a luminosity, so the Venus needs to start, I mean, NASA needs to realize and start saying, well, the idea that that, yep, we either found a moon or we found a planet there. A lot of stuff, and then start talking about the meatball, the cowboy meatball, and the other meatballs, because basically I need to get that again and reassert you in here in this video that we are at Sechi H12, H1A, sorry, okay, and this is the footage from the 18th, you got the cowboy meatball here, Okay, and then whatever, and, and yes, I understand from the other people that have been watching this stuff for years and trying to NASA denial and being scared of them, though they're going to tell you that you believe in UFOs. I don't believe in UFOs yet. We have not found an intelligent life form out there, okay, in space yet, okay? We haven't, and if we do, you know, like he says, I basically, I would stuff it. So I got to play this so we can see the other meatball that basically you've seen in the last video because I should have uploaded it before this one. And you'll see that when we get the darkness from the meatball and the light curvature from Earth, and we've been seeing the blacking out on Earth from the uh, Canadian French telescope in over in Hawaii, okay? And remember, realize how small Mercury is. And remember, don't get brainwashed and you think, well, then that's how small Venus is. Venus is comparably, if you want to think about it, that small compared to the sun, but we have two magnetical lines here, okay? It's a dark magnetical line and a very small luminosity. So there's an object there no matter what. And it's in those exact coordinates between, because the light helps you figure out that the stuff's there. You don't need sonar because you got a telescope giving you an actual picture of something there, okay? You don't need sonar to know that this is there. That's there. Your eyes can see it, okay? The light the electrical luminosity from the sun and the supergiants lets you see that this stuff is there. This is here. The cowboy meatball is there. And also this. Check this out. You see, all I can play around with is the speed of the, of the video. So then you get the light curvature. And as you can see, see, there's something between us, our meatball, our cowboy meatball down here, and the sun up here. Because basically there's something up by the sun bl blocking the light curvature. Okay, and then since I can go over to latest here on Navy, you'll see where it's at. It's over here, and then you'll see the massive size of how damn far the tr you can s go to Alaska and go to you can go to Soho Beacon, and they'll tell you exactly how far I've showed you in print without saying it. How far in mileage that the uh, satellites are out? They're in a huge orbit out of the sun. Okay, we have uh, the ones that do your satellite TV and stuff. They're twenty-two thousand. 300 miles in orbit, okay? And they're talking about something coming around in 2029. So, see the meatballs over here that's doing that light curvature that you're seeing when we go to our Sechi footage here, okay? And then there's also this. So, see, there's large, huge things in our solar system because that's up blocking the light by the sun right there, you see? And it's not that object down here, but it is controlling the light curvature of the electrical static off of the sun, and then that's Venus, and it's in the luminosity, and it's shadow in space, and so forth and so such, okay? And yet, it's a spotlight, you see? But, and there's Venus, and it's in luminosity on its, you know, it goes a clockwise rotation, you see? So, with the light control of the switch, the, el <laughs> the electrical magnetical of what's up there by the sun, i.e., I'll just emphasize again that the idea, this is why we've been getting the blockage of those huge objects that do block light from space, okay, on our solar system, and then we see the, find these objects that are between us and this Venus, I mean, between the sun and Venus, and then there's so, the, and I've t constantly told you that there's objects between Earth, you see the shadows that you see when you look at Worldwide Telescope, I mean, at, excuse me on that, the hell with Worldwide Telescope, it's all art, Okay, this is actual factual. Okay, now I want to freeze that because that's going to basically, we'll step back and I'll hit reverse. I think I'll be stepping back on that. We'll go up and see 
if I got it going the right direction. One more step. And there's our object up there. You see up above, because basically I'm not switching in around, the meatball, and you're going to see it because I'll hit play again. And no matter what, see this is up. Now this is the only thing that would be close to Earth. You see, that's up in its path. And then it's knocked out everything it's ever knocked out in billions of years. So the idea that everything should be, like I say, it's always Uranus, and it's always what's out our back door in the darkness of space, you see. And then we get the light, whatever's blocking the light curvature here up by the, the sun, that you can end up seeing that over there. And that's huge, and I've showed it in the last video, and I'll pop up again real fast to 400, because I can do that really quick, 400. And then we'll go down and let the video play again. So, saving tape time, because it's jammed. Yes, supervisory control and data acquisition. Yes, and Google stands for Government Organized Override Government Legal Entity, pretty much, okay? And that's why everybody that was rich and wealthy knew that there was a great, because the idea, it's this power of the state of control, okay? And... Your internet is a phone call, so then basically, and there's private companies, so basically this is a phone call, and basically this is not what they tried to put tag words. There's words out there called social media. They're just words. There's no laws. So this is the internet, and you can't shut the internet down, because the internet's the truth. There's some people that are pawns and stuff that, and play games with people, but anyway. So this is all, and then I'll hit play, and I think I'll have my, the speed still sit there, as you'll see the hugeness of the the cowboy meatball, how fast it moves, and then the idea that, yes, there's another large object over here by the sun that is basically doing that light curvature blockage, okay? And then you see the rotation here. It's got a good enough speed that you'll see the rotation of, the, of Venus, which is clockwise. You'll see its shadow of Venus, okay? And also could be a, something that is that same size on the same platitude. We're not exactly sure because, see, it's blocking out the light so basically, see, this is the somewhat the size of what the object that is up by the sun doing the light curvature, i.e., see? Yes, that's your object that's doing that light blockage that you're seeing, the shadow of it, okay? That's doing that right there, okay? And that affects and gives enough shadow, just like we just had a solar eclipse, you see? It's, remember, yes, it doesn't take too much to block a bunch of light from, and that's the shadow of, and this it, that proves that Venus does a CME reactive atmospheric flare to the sun's electrical energy you see because it's electrically magnetically tied to the sun because that shadow that you see over here behind on venus that shows you that it's actually not a camera flare that it actually does a cme reactive atmospheric flare because we see it electrically all the time and this object is basically a small magnetical line and it's there now this is the object size of what's blocking that light curvature from because that's in front it's by the sun between Venus and the Sun, and that's the size of what that is. Let me freeze that. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to get the idea of what the size of the object, the shadow is the same size as the object that's doing this light blockage up here by the Sun, okay? And it could be this big here, and it also could be this big. And basically, I'll pop the 400 real fast so you can see that, and also <clears throat> to do, see about our eye, the factual of the shadow and then of Venus and the idea that it puts off a CME reactive flare in its atmosphere, you see? And it does, because there's in the darkness of space, there is Venus, okay? And then no matter what, this object's on a magnetical line and it's there. And then also, let me give you the size of what's doing this light blockage over here. And see, I'm a constitutionalist, so the idea that freedom of religion and everything like that, and then either God or gods or whatever power you... Th it, no matter what, the power to be out there shows us the truth of everything. This is the size of the object that is blocking the light. The other object that I just showed you, the shadow, is down here, is the object that's on that magnetical line that I've showed you that's next to Venus. That's some, there's an object out there. We have found an object next to Venus. It's on a magnetical line. It might be a moon of Venus that they've never... It's going to be what NASA wants to decide to say it is. Mercury really isn't a planet. It's the same size as the moon, okay? This object, no matter what, is there, and it's making the light darkness here... So that's your size, because that's the shadow of the object that is making the light curvature do what it's doing off the sun, the light energy, and that's the size of it right there that I just zoomed in on to that's over here blocking it. It's not this that's blocking that light off the sun right now. This is huge, so there's massive distances, i.e., out in space as they're doing the blockage of this stuff. That object's somewhere along here, and it rotates around the sun, or it's been around. I'm not saying it actually it's been coming through our solar system, okay? whether it rotates or not, and then I hit play on this, 
and get back to the reality of the idea that we're at what we're actually at and I'll speed it up real fast here I can do that too and get down on size and this is all actual factual science fact from the sun today and not this, these other companies and stuff like that that are giving you and then sitting around joking about oh they did the joke about the Mayan calendar and all this ha ha and their stuff they know this it looks like spaceships no I would stuff an alien, okay? We are looking for intelligent life form out there in space. We need intelligent life form here on Earth, too, it seems like. Because